Hey everyone, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to show you how to work with arrays inside of a J-frame so we can have a bit more of a visual and interactive experience with our lists of numbers and text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my array samples project I had before and in the default package I'm going to right click and I'm going to make a new J-frame and I'm just going to work with this one. I'm going to call it array frame. Click finish. We're going to load it up with one array. I'm going to slap a button on there and I'm going to slap a list on there and show you how the list can be used to interact with the array. So for my button, I'm just going to use the swing button here. That's the normal buttons we use. I'm just going to leave it called J button one. That one's going to randomly fill the list. I'm going to have a button here, J button two. This one is going to clear the list out for me. Now to actually use the list itself, uh, you may say, well, what can I put the array into? I'm not going to take the swing control list from this menu. I'm actually going to go down here to AWT. And in AWT, I'm going to take list from there. Okay, this one's easier to use for now for beginners. So I'll take the list and let's just plunk that list right there. Give it a little bit more size. Okay, looks good. Now let's get to the coding of it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the source of this JFrame and I'm going to give my entire class an array to use and share over the entire frame. So I'm going to make that array up here. So integer array. I'm going to call this array A just so it's easy to type. Capital A is a new integer array and I'll make this one keep 20 items. Perfect, right? Let's go back to our, well, I didn't give it a name here. Oh, wait, sorry, I did. Array A. I'm going to go back to design. I'm going to click that J button one. This one here is going to fill the list with some items. So let's do this one really fast here for integer K is zero. K is less than A dot length. K plus plus. Remember what I'm doing here, right? It's nice to write the code, even though I know the length of this thing is 20, don't use the 20, use a dot length. Much more general, you could copy paste this code and reuse it again, right? And it's always gonna work. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say, hey, a slot k, set yourself equal to, and I'll just do a little random code here, math dot random. Let's say times 100 plus one. And that's it. Now. This actually fills the array itself. Uh, there's not technically a way to fill the list itself with code uh, automatically every time this array changes. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a little command here. And this next command is gonna add all the items of this array into the list that I plunked down here. Okay, which was called list one. So here we go. I'm going to write a little uh, section of code and it's me called show list. Now you'll see it's underlined red because this isn't a known command. This is what I'm going to make up. It says symbol method show list. Can't find it. Well, I'm going to write it right down here. So I'm going to write this public void show list. Okay, and now I get the code that command in. So whenever it sees this here's show list, it's gonna jump down and run the code inside of here. This is just a section off my code. And by doing this method that I'm creating here, anytime I change my list and I wanna reshow it in that box or that list box, I just have to go show list. I don't actually have to go copy paste the code. So this is gonna be nice and convenient for us. So here we go. First thing I wanna do is I'm gonna to wanna to take list one and I'm gonna to wanna to cleared out. Now you think maybe there's a clear command, but as I type dot clear, you'll see it's deprecated. That's the line there. So it'll work, but there's no guarantee it'll work in the future. So we shouldn't use that one. So if you actually hunt all the other ones there, there's actually a command called remove all. This will remove all the items from the list. So the list will be empty visually to the user. Now what I want to do is basically just use a for loop. I want to go through my entire list and 
I want to add the items to the list. List one. So I'll actually do this the slow way for you here. Let's go integer value is a slot k. Okay, so that's the value in slot k. And I'm going to add it to the list. List one dot add. And I have to give it something to add. I'm going to add value. Now, it doesn't like this. I must be using the wrong one. So what it wants here, give me a minute to just figure it out. And what you see here is it's got the red line. And the red line says, no suitable method found for add integer. It wants a string in there, right? Well, this is just like the text boxes. When you deal with the list boxes, you have to give it a string. And when you take stuff out of it, you're taking out a string. So you got to do the same trick that you do before is we say, hey, big integer class, change that value to a string. And on the same end, when we go and read out of this list, we're going to have to read a string and we convert it back to an integer since we know it's integers that we're pulling out. Now that's it. That's my entire show list method. Okay, I clear the list and use a for loop to fill the list in. Let's see this one in action here, array frame, give it a run. I should get 20 random numbers in the list. So there's my program, looks good. I click, cross your fingers and, and there's my list with the 20 numbers. Beautiful, right? It's already set up to click and drag and do a whole bunch of things. Every time I click, it's refilling that array with random numbers and then refilling it into the list using that show list method that we just wrote. So that's beautiful. Now, what can you do with the list once it's in this state? Well, you can sort of do anything you want. For instance, I'm going to make button two, change the list, and update it, just so you can see how you're going to end up using this in your own programs. So let's do a little code onto button two. So let's take a really simple task here for button two, just so we can see it in action. I'm going to do something to the list. Uh, let's just go through the list and let's double everything in there. A slot K equals A slot K times two. Now, after I do that, I change the list. If I actually want to see it, I have to call show list. Show list will jump into show list clear the visual list and refill it up for us. Okay, so that's a pretty simple routine. This is how you can use the list in your programs, right? Anytime you change the list, you probably want to then call show list to see the changes. So when we actually give this a run now, we should see all those nice random numbers being halved, or sorry, doubled. And you know, it's working with all the numbers there, right? Beautiful. Now, what else can you do with this list? Check the next video. I'm going to show you, well, how do you know when the user has selected an item inside the list? What can you do with it then? Okay, so watch that one. And then you basically have the full functionality of the visual list, which is nice, right, for your programs.